This is Jenkins Falls. Afternoon everybody, it's Ryan Jenkins. Welcome to our first Careers in Agriculture video. Today we have Miss Libby Johnson. She is our local, uh, one of our local county extension agents. She works in Santa Rosa and Escambia counties. Um, but she's going to tell you a little bit about her job and what it entails, kind of her story, how she got to where she is today. And uh, hopefully it's something that, that might pique your interest. So Libby, thank you for coming with us today. I'm really excited to yes. be here. I would never think I would have talked to FFA kids about possibly becoming an extension agent. Uh, first, and I told Ryan this earlier, because I was not an FFA member. Um, so I think you're on the right path if you want a career in agriculture, but technically anybody can get involved in a career in agriculture, and it's more than you probably expect it to be. Um, I have a great job. I love working with Ryan and other farmers. So my job works with, uh, I work for the University of Florida IFAS Extension Service. So I work in the Scambia and Santa Rosa, like you said, and I work primarily with row crop producers, but also pasture uh, producers. I don't do cattle. I'm primarily a plant person. Um, I work on ponds uh, and some natural resources stuff. And of course we do a lot of ag awareness uh, with Ryan and other folks. Um, it's a great job to have. Of course you do have to get an education for it, but not all extension careers probably um, start out thinking that you have to get a master's or PhD. Some of us just start out uh, undergraduates. So if you get an undergraduate degree, you can definitely become an extension agent. Um, there's extension services throughout the, the, the country, excuse me. Every state has an extension service. So if you want to move to Hawaii and be an extension agent, you can do that. Or you can work in Florida. There's no shame in that game. Yeah, no, no. This is a place to be. Well, Escambia and Santa Rosa are the place to be. I kind of look at, for those of you that aren't really familiar with what extension is, and Libby may or may not agree with me. You know, I used to be a flight paramedic, so I, I have that background in my pocket. But I kind of look at the extension agent as an emergency room physician, an ER doctor. You know, an ER doctor has to know a little bit about a lot of different um, diseases and, and different things to be able to treat them initially when they come in. But then they will, from there, send it to a specialist. So it's kind of like the extension agent. If, they know a little bit about a lot, so they come when we have a problem, we'll call them to our farm and say, hey, come look at this weed or this bug or why is this plant dying? You know, kind of, they have to know a little bit about a lot. So once they see what's going on with their training, then they may call in a specialist, but they have a large network of people right. that, that they can immediately call and, and that kind of starts the ball rolling and, and before long we figured out what our problem is and everything's good. So that's. That's kind of the cool part, I think, about Libby, and I think she'll tell you, I doubt you do the same job every single day, right? Very, I mean, very seldom. It just yes. kind of, you never know what the day is going to bring type thing, right? And who it's going to bring. That's, I think, interesting, because when you told me this earlier that we might be the emergency room doctor, we like to, we to say we're the Google of questions because people call the extension service with all sorts of questions about a wide variety of things. I specifically deal with crops, but we have agents in our <coughs> office that deal with dietetics and people that deal with past, uh, excuse me, like lawns and stuff. I don't know anything about a lawn, but people call and say, I have this issue. And even when I visit farmers, some of you guys, I'll go to visit things and you will ask me a question about an azalea bush. I can't help you, but I have another extension agent who can. So we do get a lot of random questions from people that just are looking for the right people. And so we're here to help for that. So did you know, well, first, did you grow up on a farm or? I did grow up on a small farm. My father raised cattle, and I told you earlier that I still don't mess with cattle. I've never been that interested in it. So yes, a small farm, um, and I was I'm from South Louisiana originally, so I was always around sugar cane fields, and I had an interest in agriculture. I never thought I was gonna be an extension agent. So no matter what you think you're gonna do right now, it may or may not be your career. And I really do see extension being my career. I, I enjoy this job. Um, Ryan and I spoke earlier about like knowing what you want to do is kind of hard, but you need to know what your personality extends to. I like getting out and meeting people. If your interest is not getting out and meeting people, extension's probably not for you. Um, but no, I did not know I was going to be an extension agent. I knew I was going to go to college, and I told him I started out in political science, and then I added uh, plant science, like my second year, or maybe the end of my first year. And so I ended up graduating with two degrees in political science and plant science. And then I want to go to graduate school for more uh, education and 
this just worked out to become an extension agent out here in Northwest Florida. So for the people mm -hmm. that, that still might not be as familiar with it as we are, you know, being around it every day, um, you know, for the kids that are watching, is this a indoor job? Like, are you sitting behind a desk every day or are you in the field 100% of the time or kind of what, what would you say your work week looks like on average? It depends what time of year. Like right now, well today I'm lucky to be outside with you, but generally the weather is not so great in the wintertime and y'all aren't really doing that much here, but you guys are in South Florida. Y'all are super busy right now. If you're down in Palm Beach County or Hendry out there, y'all are growing vegetables. So the extension agent would be out a lot more. In the summertime, I would say I'm probably half in and half out. I get to make a lot of field visits. I also get to go work at the research station. Uh, we have things going on over there. We usually in a normal year have field days that we're planning. Um, yeah, I would say we're half and half in the summertime, which is what I want it to be. That's another thing about this job. If you want to solely work in, inside, being an extension agent probably is not for you. You have to want to work outside, which I love it. So if somebody wanted to be an uh, extension agent, if that's, you know, kind of, they see what you're doing and mm -hmm. what you've talked about and they want to go kind of that path, um, you know, school-wise, how would you, what, what classes or what would you, what would you tell your advisor you want to do? I mean, how, how would you get started going down that okay. path? So it depends. I would first suggest you probably go to a land grant university. So you in Florida, you would go to either University of Florida or FM, FAMU, FAMU. Uh, one of those two land grant universities are in Georgia. You go to University of Georgia or in Auburn in Alabama. So that's your first step because that really gives you a background of all of the specialists that you're going to need and it gives you more of a step into extension. Um, Ryan and I spoke earlier about internships and you could do an internship with extension even uh, between like your senior year and going to college if you wanted to and definitely we have opportunities for people that are in graduate school or undergraduate that want to do internships that they pay you so like if you do go to UF and you want an internship to work in extension office contact your local extension office probably in December or January and it pays decent money so that would be an idea I think that would be a great way to see what an extension agent really does and two, I mean, you touched on a little bit, and this is probably getting more, more involved than what we want to on this series here, but you are part of the University of Florida, right? Mm -hmm. That's, it's a shared thing with your county that you're in and, and your land grant university in here, we're dealing with University of Florida, Alabama extension agents, they're part, okay. part of Auburn. So so you're actually part of the university you're it's kind of a yes. hybrid type yes. situation i guess for and lack you continually of a better term. get called back to gainesville for meetings and we always have in services that are related to, to university of florida stuff so yeah we are very much a, a university of florida person what uh the job outlook for the future i mean j this is a position that's been i forget how long but for years and years and years this is this it's is more than 100 yeah right so, so I want to believe that it's a, a career that has a uh, promise for the future as long as people keep eating. And I'm 99.99% sure everybody wants I to keep I'm eating. I promise I'm going to eat and I'm going to wear clothes. <laughs> right. Um, there's going to be an extension service out there. I'm going to say it might not be as broad as it has been in the past. Um, they do want us to focus on specific things. Um, there's probably more interest nowadays in more precision ag information. Um, things about artificial intelligence that you spoke yeah. about earlier. Uh, in the day so yeah you'd have to have a, a better degree on some of the modern technologies rather than just worrying about what your soil type is what would uh you know like a starting salary what would it be a salary range do you think okay in the, you know from starting out fresh out of college at least you know where where would you start so when I started, I think it was like $26,000. That's no kidding, but that's been a few minutes. I mean, I know y'all can't tell in the, the video, but I'm really kind of old. <laughs> so, <laughs> I crack myself. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I think with a master's, you'd probably start out at about 40, a little bit more than 40,000. And I mean, I've known extension agents to retire that have made well over $100,000. And they retired in the last five or six years. So there's a decent salary out there. You might not ever make as much as, uh, a millionaire but you'll, you'll do good to be able to live your life the way you wanted to so a big a big change from the days where you thought political science is what you wanted to do and now you're standing out in the middle of a field of oats so that's yeah. kind of uh that's 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 what the kids need to understand that it wasn't a straight path no. that got you here 
I don't think there's always a straight path. There's not for many people. I think with a lot of young farmers, maybe that have farmland, they know they're going to do that, but it's maybe not always the straightest path. Even for them, they decide they want to change courses. Right. So, yeah. Good very, luck, guys. I hope you good. can get a good job. Thank you, Libby. That was, uh, that's good. That's exactly what I wanted to hear is that kind of information. So all the people that have to follow behind you now on this video series has got their work cut out for them. So. You guys, y'all got the best first. <laughs> but y'all should really listen. There's so many opportunities for people in agriculture. I don't want you ever to be disappointed that you can't find something to do with ag. That's right. All right. Thanks, Libby. Thanks, Thanks for having us.